It's the Drum and Bass Arena Awards 2021. I'm Dave Colombo Jenkins, and this year I'm going to be hosting it live on a bike. Then I'll be on an aircraft, then I'll be on a Concorde, then I'll be on a spaceship, and then we'll be touching down to host the whole thing live from your Nana's house. It's 2021, it's time to have some fun. On your bike, Dave. Yes, it's the Drum and Bass Arena Awards live and direct from a top secret room in your nan's house. It's 2021, our 13th ceremony. Unlucky for some, not after the year we've had. You know, the lockdown part felt longer than a queue for a drink at Return to Dance and the unrestricted part has gone in a flash, like one of AMC's quick switches. Was that my tune? And, you know, these days we're savoring everything we used to take for granted and squeezing what we can out of this crazy thing called life. Now, let's see how much D&B we can squeeze in to this year's awards as we celebrate all that's great and good about our scene and the culture, online, offline, raving and free. And just in case this is your first rodeo, hey, I'm your captain, Jenna G. And joining me from a rave cave in a corner of the cosmos is the space cowboy they call Dave Colombo Jenkins. He'll be breaking down some of the results and guiding us through this weird old year. And it starts right here with the first award, best live stream set. Dave, Dave in your ravey cave. Are you living the dream? Living the dream, Jenna. I am living the stream. What an award to kick off with. Best live stream set accurately captures just how different this year has been. Firstly, huge shouts to the 2020 flashbacks like John B's Technicolor Adventures and the chaos of Runtings and the pure wholesomeness of Colette Warren and Ben Soundscape's Intrigue streams. And of course, AMC occasionally popping up and saying, have a bit of this, my son. All of these kept us going through last year and the first part of this year. Then, on the other hand, we seem to have this new interesting theme of extreme DJing, like sets on a bike or hot air ballooning, mixing on glaciers, windmilling. What next? A liquid set done 10,000 leagues under the sea? A neuro set in an active volcano? That would be fire. Ponzi locations aside, streaming has been a great leveller and brought our attention to a lot of new talents. Who in drum and bass even knew about Don Whiting this time last year? No one. And he's actually up for three awards, including best DJ. Mad. Now for Dom, I love how he's got people active and out on their bikes. And he's been riding his vibes all across the UK. That is great. But for me, DMB belongs on the dance floor, which brings us to the other nominations in this category. Both Noiser invites, rest in peace, Noiser. And of course, that wild looking Keep Hush jam from Christchurch, New Zealand with Alex Perez. Remember when New Zealand had all the fun and over here in the UK, we had none? In the scheme of things, that really wasn't that long ago. But in the short term memory of drum and bass, it was a lifetime ago. 
So yeah, a full range of different streams that really tell the unique story of 2021. What a way to kick off. Now let's see how far back the voters' memories have gone. And the nominees for best live stream set are AMC, Digging Deep, Liquid Classics, Alex Perez, Keep Hush Live, Christchurch, 1985 Music Takeover, Come on, Crooked and Mephius, live from Iglesia. Dom Whiting, drum and bass on the bike. Noisia, Noisia Invites 2021, Final Groningen Edition. What a top five. Now let's see who's won. In third place, AMC, Digging Deep, Liquid Classic. In second place, Alex Perez, Key Push, Live Christchurch, 1985 Music Takeover. And in first place, best live stream set 2021 goes to Dom Whiting, drum and bass on the bike. Congratulations, Dom Whiting, bringing a whole new dimension to being on road. Here's why Dom took home the gold in this category. Where's a horn? London's completely a roadblock right now. It's a roadblock. Reciprocated, ever faded, yes, us too. Now when that's the very... Pump up the volume, pump up your tires. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Dom's been nominated in two other awards tonight, so that's not the last we've seen of him. And I've got to send some big love to a few other people who've all had multiple nominations for awards this year. Rhea and Colette Warren have smashed it with five and six nominations, respectively. Amazing, ladies. Elsewhere, AMC's up for four nominations, Turno's up for five, and Camo and Crooked are up for six. And all of them made the top 10 nominations for the next award, its best artwork. Introduced as a new award last year, this one is all about the unsung heroes. The designers, illustrators, photographers and the artists who bring a whole other meaning to the music. It doesn't matter how good your tune is nowadays, with hundreds of tunes being released each and every week without well-considered artwork, it's a lot harder to grab the public's attention. But which artwork grabbed the most attention this year? Let's check the top five. And the nominees for Best Artwork are Jack Springbeth for AMC, Void LP. Demo Pro for Mephius and Camo and Crooked, Sientello. Josh Fry and Andy Hayes, Polar and Bryson, Beneath the Surface. Big Active for Sub Focus, Reworks One. Dohee Kwan for The Upbeats, Not Forever. Very interesting. Now, each of these releases are also up for other awards tonight. In fact, only two artworks in that top 10 weren't nominated elsewhere in the awards, which kind of makes me wonder, people, if you're all trying hard enough when it comes to thinking about who you're going to vote for. Who knows? Who cares? I'm not your real mom. I'm just your fantasy one. <laughs> but who is the artwork daddy of 2021? Let's find out. In third place, Josh Fry and Andy Hayes, Polar and Bryson, Beneath the Surface. In second place, Big Active, Sub Focus, Reworks One. And in first place, Best Artwork 2021, Demo Pro, Messius and Camo and Crooked, Cienzillo. I'm Denise. I'm Matt. We are Demo Pro. Thank you very much for the award for best artwork. Um, we have been working with Cayman Crook and Matthews over the last 13 years, designing artworks and visuals and videos. Thus, it is actually it's very it's a very big pleasure to work with them. Always good fun. We're looking forward to the next releases to the next years. And thank you very much for the award again. It's a great pleasure and a big honor. Bye. 
Five. Big up the schnitzel soldiers. And so we roll. It's award number three and it's a biggie. Best label. At a time when it's easier than ever to self-release and self-promote, labels are constantly reinventing the game and bringing new energy into what they do. There was a time when the big labels seemed to just rely on their name for clout, but even the biggest have had to really up their game and be inventive to push their artists. Leveling up, the best labels are once again putting in the work. But which labels did you, the DB loving public, think worked the hardest this year? Let's check out the top five nominations. And the nominees for best label are. 1985 Music Born on Road Hospital Records Ram Records Vision Recordings Interesting. A few big names not on that list this year. I'm not going to waste any time here. Let's see who won. In third place, 1985 Music. In second place, Born on Road. And in first place, Best Label 2021 Hospital Records. Shouts to Hospital Records. 25 years in the game, 10 years winning this award. Fair play, they put out some exceptional music this year with killer albums from Inja, Unglued, Fred V, Etherwood, Newtone, and Degs. Plus, awesome releases from the likes of Makoto, Winslow, Veridity, Mike Kiss, Flavor D, Bop, Whiny, and so many more, including Dillinger remixing Urban Dawn's Beatles cover. How weird was that? But not to take away any of Hospital's win at all, they are the Andy C of best labels. Size-wise, it's like entering a cycle race on a Harley Davidson. The really interesting stories are happening elsewhere in the results. Like where the hell are critical music? A few years ago, they were second place and they were the first label to break up the never-ending and pretty boring Hospital vs. Ram annual scrap. This year, they haven't even tipped into the top five. And how about Born on Road's results? Huge shouts to Kelvin373, Aries, Gold Dubs, and the crew. This Bristol collective have been getting more and more votes each year, and they're now in second place. This is huge. Who knows? With so many new generation talents on side, could Born on Road be the label to knock Hospital off the top spot? It's got to happen one day. These are the results that keep this particular award lively and interesting and not quite as predictable as an illustrated picture of a DJ on a flyer. Big boy shouts to all labels who are nominated this year and all labels in general who continue to encourage great talent and push amazing music out as far as they can. I think it's high time we did some interviewing. Hospital Records in the house. Hello, Dave. Chris, how are you, man? I'm good, man. Good Excellent. Good to see You're you. You're tremendously and yellow, Dave. Thank you very much. And I even and have it. nice yellow trainers yeah. as well. I, <laughs> appreci I appreciate the effort. I'm always making an effort. <laughs> and I've got, well, this is not much of an effort to give you this. Best label, Drum and Bass Arena Awards 2021. Amazing. The tenth label, best label trophy <laughs> in <Amazing>. a row. <laughs> is it the tenth in a row? Tenth in a row. Oh, that's tenth. amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's, that's lovely. Uh, Brilliant. It's what amazing, I isn't it? <laughs> and I think, you know, you guys have really had an exceptional year as well. Last year was a really, really tricky year for everybody. Yeah. This year you've come out of the doors blazing and just been loads of incredible music right across the board. How's it been for you? It's, I mean, you know, it's because it's 25th anniversary, uh, as it is for you good people. Yeah. Which is a, an anniversary, you know, that we share and we share with other people in, you know, in the industry. It's felt, it's felt really good to reach it. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, it feels like a, like a, Bit of a milestone, I think, for you know, for companies like Arena and ours. Um, so, for you know, for myself, for Tony, for the directors, for the whole team, it's just yeah, you know, it's felt it's felt really satisfying um, after last year, and still basically going through the early part of this year. I mean, it's a graft, it's a proper graft, and we didn't really get back into the building, into the office until June, July. 
And I think even when we got back, like we had two people get COVID straight away, we had to close the building again. You're like, oh, no way. This is horrible, you know. Um, but now, you know, getting into winter, end of the year, I mean, I've got to say, I'm really be enjoying being back in the office. I was in yesterday, just like being around a bunch of the staff. We had artists in, we had people in the studio. There was so much going on and I, I love it. You know, yeah. so, um, yeah. It's, it's almost really sensory overload, isn't it, really? Because yeah. we're still kind of getting used to that and acclimatising to it. And in like days like this where I'm interviewing and mm. doing lots of recording, uh, we haven't been doing that for like two years, yeah. really. And it's still taken a little while to get back up to speed. I know, it was like funny. I had, I had my, um, my 16 year old daughter around last night and, um, and she, like, I was telling her that, you know, I, I was going to see you guys today, and she was like, is there stuff on YouTube, Dad, from the other ones? And so, we, we, what did we watch? We watched the 2018 one. Oh, right, on oh, my first The first one, one you did it in yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was, like, such a kind of throwback, but it felt like years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like people, like people in real life hanging out together. I, I really, really miss it. Yeah, definitely. But there's been one consistency, and that's releases, that's music. That's it. And you've put out loads of great albums this year. It's been like full steam ahead, really, especially with the 25 Years collection. Yeah. Um, recently, the Forza Horizon collection and yeah, stuff man. like that. Yeah. You've just had your pedal to the, pedal to the metal, really. And uh, yeah, some really exciting artists have joined the family as well, haven't they? It's been great. You know, like, we you know, we, um, as you know, we did our 25 uh, year project at end of March which was great. I had a, you know, I had a really eclectic mix of like, it was, it was really, it was really enjoyable doing that with Tilo, with Nikki, with the whole A&R team and having, as we wanted, really wanted a broad cross section of um, up and coming artists, unknown artists, people from the roster uh, to people like Ray Keith and Nookie. I mean, you know, like people that- And are, Dillinger. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like it's amazing. It's amazing to be in that situation. So that was a real, you know, that was a real marker for this year. Um, we had that fantastic record uh, from Inja, yeah. um, which I love, uh, which I've got to say was the first time he, he said to me, I'm going to go away and make an album. I'm not going to play it to you till it's done. Now, we don't usually make records like that. That's got to be quite scary from a label point well, of view. Yeah, really. because, you know, and also it's been like I'm being made redundant. But I thought I was good at this. <laughs> and it was like, it was the summer before, like we went to Studio 338. Me, Dan Newtone, uh, Nicky, Tilo, and we sat in the upstairs room and, um, and he plays the whole album. We were like, wow, this is just amazing. So, you know, we had records like this, like, I mean, Forza, um, Forza 5, uh, which is a really, really exciting project to work on. It's becoming an annual tradition now, or a pre like a, a tradition per game, really. And it's you yourself know, and Degs on the radio, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, which is, which is good fun. You know, um, I've got to shout out um, Kyle Hopkins at Microsoft, who is a um, long-standing friend of mine. We've always worked on his projects Kid together. Kid Hops. Yeah. So he's he's the like head of music over in Seattle, and you know he's he's like a key, but key part of this entire project. You know, and you know being a drum and bass DJ himself, he really really gets it. Puts his own passion and energy into that project. Amazing, well we're gonna wrap up now on that shout out to Kid Hops. I wanna shout out because obviously there was um, hospitality in the woods as well. Yes, uh, that's coming up though later on in the awards. So um, will they win, won't they? We do not know. And just congratulations on Best Label for 10 years running. You, I am gonna sign out on this question. Um, do you think, because you're such a big label and so, you know, it's 25 years, will there ever come a point where you might step down and let other labels win? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, but do you know what we've talked about it? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a weird question, but um, it's, it's good you brought it up. Uh, maybe we should. We actually spoke, we've spoke about it in the office before. And like, do you know what's funny for the, for me and Tony? You know, you, you kind of think we, we should probably do that. We've, we've got young staff coming in who've been with us for six months, and they're like, oh no, don't do that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll talk to you about it later. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. It, Thank you very much. Hospital Records, Best Label, Drum and Bass Arena Awards 2021. Thank you very much, Chris. We got Born on Road in the house. Kelvin373 and Aries. How are you both doing? Yeah, everything's good, thanks. Great, Wicked. thanks, mate. It's thanks for having us down. Oh, our pleasure. I've got some really interesting news for you. You've come second place in Best Label. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, amazing. Hospital still not got in the top spot, but you guys are biting at their heels. Like, yeah, how, how has it been for you? How has this year been for you for a start? It's been a good year. We've been obviously a bit of a crazy year, but the last three or four months going back into doing music again in the clubs, it's been amazing, to be honest. We've had a, a really good year, yeah. 
can't, can't complain. Everybody in the team's been smashing it. There's a massive crew of us at the moment, so yeah. Yeah, you do really seem like a proper collective, like rolling, uh, a rolling crew, really, just bringing on loads of new talent, supporting the new generation, really. Yeah, no, it's really important, you know, to get out there and, and give them that support. Yeah. Um, it's definitely been a tough year, I'd say, but I think regardless of, of what's been going on around us, you know, people are still consuming the music, people are still listening to music, so regardless of what's going on externally, you've got to keep putting out that music and, and supplying the people with what they want, you know? So, yeah, it's yeah. really great to get that feedback. Yeah, because I, I think a lot of labels didn't really know what to do last year when the lockdown pretty much annihilated the entire year, really. Yeah. Uh, you guys just cracked on, really, didn't you? Well, yeah, that's the only way, really. We, we were like, we could stop down tools and, you know, have a bit of time off. But I think, like, putting out music in that period was more important than anything else, you know? Like I said, people still are consuming that music and, and need it. You know, it's their, their release at the end of the week or whatever, you know, if they can't go out to raves or... Yeah. Like that, so, yeah, that's it. Drum and bass was born on the dance floor, but it's part of people's lives. It's part of their everyday culture, really. And I think you guys really embody that, I think. Anyway, regardless of lockdowns and stuff, this is it's a lifestyle, isn't it? Born on road, that says it all. Literally, yeah. <laughs> cool. I mean, it's been a year of two halves, really. I know that you went to New Zealand, didn't you, at the start of the year? Yeah, we got really lucky. We did a, a tour out there uh, with Sub 180, big up Sub 180 going. Um, yeah, and that was that was amazing, just to kind of escape I uh, have that bit of time to reset, you know, play some shows in a period of time when no one in the world was performing. So, yeah, we were very blessed to be able to get out there. That must have been a magical time. That must have been awesome, really, especially after months and months and months of not playing to any dance floors or just sit down things, really. That yeah. must have been incredible. Yeah, we've always felt like we had our identity removed, you know, during lockdown. So to kind of just get a little bit of that back uh, and be able to go and experience a bit of what we signed up for, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys are in Aries. You've been DJing and on the road for years and years now. And I mean, you were literally born on road, weren't you, as part of like the free party kind of movement and stuff. So how are you feeling it now? Because for me, as a raver, these have been some of the best parties I've been to in my entire raving life, like since the mid nineties. Have you guys been feeling that as well from behind the decks? Certainly, yeah. Since we've been back, it's it's been high energy, hasn't it? Like yeah. Every some... dance, you know, everyone's going for it. Um, lots of fresh music to play. Obviously, throughout lockdown, there's been a lot of new music made, so there's plenty of material to test on the dance floor. Awesome. What material can we expect now from Born On Road in 2022? We've got quite a bit of stuff coming. We've got EPs from a bunch of artists. We've got some new stuff from Grey, which are coming out quite soon. Um, we've got a remix EP from a, a bunch of his classics he did a few years ago, which is sick. Um, we've got an artist called Janaway coming through. We've got a night called Napes coming through. Um, we've got an EP from A Little Sound. Um, what else have we got? Loads all, of stuff. all the regulars, you know, we've got fresh music from AC13, Ben Snow, Disruptor. Amazing. Crossy's going to be making an appearance again on the label this year. We're trying to line up a few external releases as well from some of our friends within the scene. So. Yeah, Brilliant. So to Jane Man as well. We've got some. Big tunes coming from him again as well. So. Amazing, amazing. You just keep listing all of these like excellent new generation names who are all, you know, we're seeing in the best newcomer category and things like that. You guys do represent and you're bringing through the new generation. This is the future of drum and bass. Definitely the future. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we're very lucky where we're based geographically. You know, Bristol is a hub for drum and bass and jungle and there's a lot of raw talent around us. Yeah. So as a label and as a crew, you know, we'd be mad not to reach out and, and offer these people like a platform to kind of put their music out and, and kind of be a part of their journey. You know, that's a, a big part for us is, is being able to give someone a foot up or a help up and yeah. hand up, you know? And that's why I think we're going to see you back on this couch again in future years, maybe even in first place. So big up the Born On Road guys, big up Bristol, big up the new generation. Thank you very much for Thanks coming for down, guys. Thanks for having us, mate. Dave. Shouts to everyone in Bristol, shouts to all our Born On Road, Rumble and Jungle family. Thank you for everyone that nominated us. And uh, yeah, see you soon. What he said. <laughs> Serious interview business. Plenty more chats from Dave very, very soon. But first, staying with Imprints, it's Best Newcomer Label. A special award that's only eligible to labels three years old or under. It's now in its sixth year. And many of the previous winners are now in the running for Best Label Award. So let's see who's up this year. And the nominees for Best Newcomer Label are Invicta Audio Nice one Kingpin Production 
Onyx Recordings. Overview Music. Sleepless Music. Feeling that new generation of freshness, but who did you think was the freshest? In third place, Overview Music. Second place, Invicta Audio. First place, Best Newcomer Label 2021, Onyx Recordings. Congratulations, Onyx. We should hopefully be hearing from the Onyx guys very soon. But first, I want to zoom out for a second and take in this whole award category. Firstly, mad love to Invicta Audio. They were nominated last year just after two paid releases, and they're now biting at Onyx's heels in second place. That's a very well-deserved position and another snapshot of the future generation in drum and bass. Anton Bailey and the crew there held things down during lockdown and they came out with some of the sickest parties possible. Huge shouts to Invicta Audio. An overview, the label that's home to some of the most exciting names in futuristic DMB. Gyrofield, Skylark, Yano, Operate, Clinical, Nectax. I thought these cats were a shoe in last year, but they didn't even make the top five. Now, in the last year that they're eligible for this category, they're in the top three. So big up to all of you at Overview HQ. Pound for pound, I'd say this is my favorite award because it always changes every year. And here's something really interesting. When we introduced this award in 2016, it was because there were so many independent labels popping up many of which were being launched by established artists who had outgrown the big labels that they'd started on. Now, back to the future, and only one label in this top five is run by big artists. Shout to Wilkinson and Sleepless Music. And only two in the whole top 10. Shouts to Rhea and Colette Warren with Carnelian Music. The rest of these labels are proper DIY, grassroots, new generation energy, and I love that. And I also love the fact that these results in this category can never be the same every year. It's that constant rotation of freshness. Once you've won, you've won. Now off you pop to the best label category. But don't you pop anywhere quite yet because we're gonna do some chatting. Onyx Recordings in the house. How are you doing, Chris Wickens? Very good, thank you, Dave. How Excellent. are you? Excellent, I'm really, really good. And good. it is my pleasure to provide you and present you with this award. Best oh, newcomer label. No way. Yes, what? best newcomer label, <laughs> Onyx no, Recordings. You're joking me. Not at all. Not at all. We don't joke about these matters. No way. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I am honestly, I would have never guessed it. I was, we were as a team saying, oh, it's going to be these guys, it's going to be these guys. We'll probably be like there or something, but never would we have imagined that this would have happened. Amazing. So, thank you so much. Oh, congratulations. Thank How you. has 2021 been for you guys anyway? Yeah, it's been a seminal year, you know, like it's the year sort of after we have done the stay at home parade, if you will. We did four online festivals and, you know, that was crazy. So 2021 has been sort of picking up the pieces from that and just seeing where we can improve, growing the team a little and just putting more pieces together, meeting new artists and just making new things happen, really. Amazing, amazing. And also releasing artist albums as well. You had your first artist album yeah. with DJ Gore, didn't you? Yes, that was amazing. That was his first album. There was some amazing artists from Bristol down on that and just a multi-genre as well. It was the first time we touched upon Garage, which will sort of sing echoes to what we'll do in the future. Um, right. That was amazing. Is that an exclusive? You're going to turn into a UKG label now? <laughs> <Could you imagine? laughs> we'll take that award back now, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to give it to you then. So. <laughs> yeah. No, cool. I think it's great. And you guys represent the new generation, as do all of the newcomer labels, really. Absolutely. You know, like, uh, there's so much raw talent out there at the moment. And I feel like a lot of the big boys are looking down towards that way and going, hmm, what can we learn from? And what can we yeah. pick up and integrate into our kind of systems? So, no, I think yeah, that's great. It's an honor to be working with all the newcomers. Yeah, definitely. And what's been really interesting is when we introduced this award in 2016, there was a lot of labels being run by big artists who'd moved on from the labels that they kind of outgrown. But now, like eight out of the 10 labels that were all nominated mm. are all like yourselves, really, just, a, you know, kind of proper grassroots DIY new of generation. Course. And this is the future. This is the future of drum and bass, I Absolutely, think. Absolutely, really. yeah. 
cool. There's been some amazing labels that have come up and now are sort of in your main category as well. So yeah. the growth has really been there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So when you were looking at this then, who did you think was going to win then? I mean, honestly, I've always got to, I've always put my vote on Overview. Like, I actually put my vote into Overview every time. Oh, what? Which so is you really funny. I don't, I don't vote for myself. No, I vote for uh, Overview and Pete and Ollie and all those kind of guys. That's where my vote always is. That's why I'm so surprised. <laughs> wow, amazing. Well, they actually came third place. They came oh, third place. Amazing. So it's you guys, then Invicta, oh, who incredible. again have had another great year, incredible, and yeah. Overview as well. But there's amazing. that nice Brighton connection. That's brilliant that oh, you yeah. vote for another label and you don't vote for your own. <laughs> yeah. We always go out for dinner together and just slag each other off the whole time, so. <laughs> <laughs> go on, amazing. I mean, let's big up the Brighton scene because Bristol oh, gets future. loads and loads of love and rightfully so, Bristol's an amazing hub. But Brighton, man, Brighton has got loads of wicked stuff kicking off down there yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm very biased, but I think it's the best city for drum and bass in the world, so. <laughs> but I'll be biased, you know. <laughs> Controversial oh, words. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the Volks is an unbeatable club, so, yeah. you know, we all, we all try to call it church every now and again. Brilliant, go on, let us pray. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, cool. So yeah, big up, big up some of the team as well. Big up, because it's not, you know, you're representing not Onyx, but you've got a massive team with you as well. Yeah. We're an ever-growing team, haven't Absolutely. you? Absolutely, yeah. We've got Sam over in Australia, who's like a huge part of everything. He's like a Swiss army knife when it comes to creativity and marketing. And he's a producer as well. He's muted Hugh, so big up to Sam and Jake as well on the writing side. He's amazing. And uh, the rest of the team, like Josh Reason and Jack too, so. Awesome, Huge awesome. Team, awesome people. Brilliant. Onyx Recording, Best Newcomer Label, Drum and Bass Arena Awards 2021. Thank Congratulations, you so much. man. Awesome. Cheers, Thank you very man. much Thank for coming so down. Much. Big up. Thank you, Onyx. Perhaps we'll see you in the best label category in a few years' time, eh? But right at this present moment, here's an award I'm ecstatic to announce. It's best club night. The raves are back, baby. Colombo. What you saying? <laughs> Sorry, Jenna, can't talk now. Too busy dancing. Seriously, I've had the best dance floor experiences in the last four or five months than I have in years. And I've done some serious raving in my time. It's amazing to be chatting about this award and real life dances again. But there are a few things that I'd like to address here which aren't amazing at all. Firstly, big up promoters who put COVID testing in place. I'm all for freedom of choice, but I do think it's an important responsibility to test yourself before you go out. And I respect promoters who put a policy in place. It puts a lot of ravers' minds at ease. And secondly, these awful stories of people being spiked in the dance. Let me tell you something. If you think it's okay to take advantage of someone in any type of way like this and turn this off, this is not for you. This music and this wonderful culture that we're all part of is not for you. Please, everyone, look out for each other. Respect each other because we finally got what we wanted back. And besides these awful incidents, it has been beautiful. Obviously, our condolences to those who are still restricted around the world or those who've had to go back into lockdown. And also special thoughts with venues and businesses who are closed for good because of the effects of COVID. But all negatives aside, man, it's good to be raving again. And here in the UK, I can't think of a time when we've had so many dances to choose from. Every weekend across all the cities, it's back to back to back D&B bliss. We've had some really fresh and vital additions to the party menu, like Nathan X's Unorthodox Collective, who are smashing down boundaries and pioneering the queer D&B movement. Huge love for the Unorthodox crew and all LGBTQ d &B heads full stop. And huge love full stop to everyone who was nominated for this award this year. Usually it's a pretty mixed UK and European blend, but this year only Liquidity and Noiser Invites made the top 10 and the rest have been British and range from Big Fat Rave, YI to the Newcastle d &B crew, to some proper Bristol institutions like Run, Intrigue and Dazed. And of course, the world famous Fabric, whose Freedom Week parties were off the chain. Salutes to every single promoter and club who have weathered the COVID storm and come out fighting. And salutes to the top five who you guys voted for the most. And the nominees for Best Club Night are... Fabric Live. Hospitality. Liquicity. 
Noisier Invites. Rumble in the Jungle. Thank you, Dave, and thank you to every single promoter who moved heaven and earth to comply with the ever-changing rules and restrictions. Without you guys, this year would have been a very different picture indeed. But who held down the best raves since the COVID curtain was lifted? Let's find out. In third place, Noisier Invite. Second place, Rumble in the Jungle. First place, best club night, 2021, hospitality. Another big win for the hospital crew. Besides 2016, when Fabric took the gold, Hospitality have won this award every single year since we launched in 2009. Geez, guys, have a year off or something. Seriously, though, here's why they're so popular with the voters. The hospitality. Now it's time to big up all the writers, bloggers, and journalists in the game. We see you with your beady eyes on every corner of our culture, supporting and applauding and shouting loudly from the sidelines, often for the acts who have been overlooked by voters through the years, but have done some amazing things and should be recognized. And that's why we introduced the Critics' Choice back in 2016. And over the last five years, we've seen the likes of Break. Bridge, Amit, Caliber, and Doc Scott all take home this award. All absolute legends in the game. And it gives me great pleasure to reveal the Critics' Choice winner 2021. A true tour de force who's broken more boundaries and done more for equality, fair representation, and diversity in the last few years than we've seen since the game began. Thanks to this winner, we have amazing organizations like EQ50 and stupendously sick graves like Rupture. Yes, this year's winner is one of the hardest working and absolute gulliest DJs in operation right now. It's Mantra! Supersized appreciation. It's high time we had a woman grabbing this award and Mantra is more than a worthy winner. She'll be joining Dave right about now. We've got Mantra in the house. Mantra, I know you've just arrived in Spain on a little well-deserved holiday, and I've got some amazing news for you. You have been voted the Critics' Choice Award this year in the Drum and Bass Arena Awards 2021. Come on! <laughs> yeah, honestly. I thought you were going to ask me to like talk about diversity, and I was a bit prickly. I was like, ask the men, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh. Welcome to the Critics' Choice Club. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Thank you. That's, Brilliant. So, that's very unexpected. Thank you so much. Who are these critics? I need to add them to my Christmas card list this year. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Awesome. I mean, you've had, you've had an incredible year. I mean, you know, the year kind of started really in July to a certain degree. From a DJ perspective, I've seen you play like three or four times since then. Um, just it's been a year of two halves, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, like it's so difficult to reflect on the year because just space and time is all so distorted at the moment. But yeah, I mean, I, I, we were lucky because actually the the weekend that the clubs opened, we had that weekend booked to do rupture at Fold. So I really remember it as a standout moment, you know, and it feels like that's when the clubs opened up. That's when life felt to, you know, kind of not get back, but you know, the clubs were opening and we were able to connect again on the dance floor. And it was, I'm not going to lie, actually, the, the first set I did at Fold was a bit weird for me. I was a bit overwhelmed. It wasn't like riding a bike. People were like, it's going to be fine. It's like riding a bike. And it wasn't like I felt like 
I don't know, I was really panicky and halfway through my set, I just had a little panic. And, you know, luckily I've been uh, playing um, quite regularly and I've kind of got into my groove now and it's just wicked. There's so much amazing music out there at the moment. So it's just like such a joy to be able to play it to people in like real life. (laughs) Yeah, completely, completely. Well, I was in that crowd watching that set at Fold and you never could have told that you had a panic or, you know, kind of had that blip or anything (laughs) like that. And that really felt like a kind of reunion there, really, in a way, didn't it? Totally. It was so emotional. Like, it just was so wonderful, like, being with so many of my loved ones and just seeing, like, the crew, all the, like, rupture heads who we haven't seen for so long. And, you know, we didn't overround the club. We, like, um, we capped it so there was a little bit of room. We didn't want it to be, like, you know, tin of sardines. It's been a long time since people have been out. We wanted that little bit of breathing space, and I think it really paid off. Um, it was, yeah, perfect. We needed to go on later, though. Six o'clock doesn't quite cut it, man. I was, yeah, <laughs> I was gutted. The double O could have carried on and on and on. Yeah. I could still be dancing to him now. That set was from totally. the gods, really, I Best think. DJ ever and, and also, yeah. I mean, props to you guys at Rupture as well for actually, and this is something that I say in the awards as well, um, when we're talking about events, that you've done it responsibly. Like, a lot of people have been asking people to take their tests, but then nobody checks them at all when they get in, and it almost feels like paying lip service, where you guys have actually, you know, you've kind of you've created this responsible kind of loyalty from the crowd where people are, are going down with tests and stuff and when I was in the queue someone even had like a LFT test for people to do there and stuff like that and I think your know, props for just being responsible really and taking that time because that must be a logistical nightmare getting people into a club is hard anyway but getting them to show the test and do it properly I think is a whole other level really so props for doing that. Yeah. Thank you I mean it's tricky it's like the whole, you know, each step we're taking, we're just trying to do what feels like the right thing to do. And we've got some people on one side saying it's irresponsible to even be putting on raves at the moment. And we've got people on the other side being like, how dare you ask for tests? It's such a liberty, like it's, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's really difficult. And, you know, we just have to think, right, what feels right? What feels responsible? What feels like the right thing to do? And just go forward with that. And yeah, it seems Yeah, well, it definitely feels right. And obviously, that was the 15th birthday as well. Yeah. We haven't got very much long to, we haven't got much time now with the interview, but I also want to big you up. I mean, you were a little bit worried that we were just going to ask you about diversity, but also big up to you and the whole team at EQ50 for everything that you're doing as well. Just absolutely smashing it. Watch really. out for our mentees because they are killer. Watch uh, out for them. Yes, they okay. are. Okay. Awesome, brilliant, brilliant. Who else? I mean, it's, it's your time now. Give some shout outs to anybody really now as we wrap up and just congratulate okay, you once again on the Critics' Choice. All my EQ50 crew, like Chickaboo, Jenna G, you got a big up Sweet Pea, the mentees who are just absolutely killing it at the moment. Of course, my lifelong partner, Double O, um, Rupture Heads, everybody. Um, this is so lovely. You know, I am a lifelong student of Jungle Drum and Bass, and the more yes. you know, the more you don't know. And yeah, I still yeah, feel yeah, like definitely. I'm scratching the surface. Nothing gets me buzzing like a Discogs pack package <laughs> yes. coming through the door. You Brilliant. know, so it's just such a thing. It's brought so much joy into my life, and this is really lovely. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank oh, you. go on. Our pleasure. That's absolutely amazing. You've given me goosebumps. That's brilliant. Enjoy the rest of your holiday in Spain, and Thank I'll see you at Rupture very, very soon. Thank you very much, Mantra. Mantra, Thank Critics' you. Choice, Drum and Bass Arena 2021. Big up. Big up, Mantra! So much love for everything she's doing right now, and extra special love for the EQ50 crew. Sorry. Now, time for some musical refreshment. We welcome an old friend of the show, dialed in direct from the US of A. It's Spin Scott with another electric live performance. You think you've got gun fingers? You're firing blanks compared to this legend. Scotty, take it away. What's up, everybody? I am Spin Scott, celebrating 25 years of Drum and Bass Arena. Special shout out to all the nominees, winners, and hosts of tonight's program. Gonna play something live for you here. This one's called 25 Years to Life. You always hear people say, I used to listen to this style of music, or I used to listen to that type of music. You know, You never hear anyone say, I used to listen to drum and bass, or I used to listen to drum and bass. That's because D&D is a life sentence. Yeah, 25 years to life.
25 years to life. Binga Flex in Banya. Thank you very much, Spin Scott. And moving on to our next award, thank you to every promoter who dared to put on a festival in a year as topsy turvy as 2021. Will we rave? Won't we rave? Will it be sit down? Will it be limited capacity? What even is raving? Am I even still alive? Who am I? These were questions we all asked right up until the event industry opened after a whole host of delays and confusing information in late July. And wow, did it open. Here in the UK, it's been like the summer of love all over again, with big outdoor events bringing us together on levels last witnessed almost two years ago. Restriction free, like COVID was never even a thing. <coughs> Excuse me, madness, but a madness none of us questioned as it had been so long since we partied like we did in the last four months. Mm, mm. So thanks again to every festival promoter and huge love to all the festival staff, live event specialists and technicians who are the lifeblood of this sector and had their livelihoods taken away from them so brutally over the last 18 months. Now, Time to see which five festivals you guys love the most for summer. Grow. And the nominees for Best Festival are Hospitality in the Woods, Let It Roll, Save the Rave, Northern Base, Rampage. Return to dance. Goosebump Central. Every single festival is a winner in my eyes, but there can be only one winner. In third place, Rampage. In second place, Let It Roll, Save the Rage. And in first place, Best Festival 2021, Hospitality in the Woods. Congratulations to the Hospital Gang. They've picked up three awards this year so far. Let's have another reminder of how good hospitality in the woods was. If you go down to the woods today, sorry. If ever there was a post-lockdown UK d &B reunion where it felt like the whole scene was out in force, this was the one, even if I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. One for the history books. But back to the future now, and it's time for a musical award. It's Best Remix! Wheel up and come again. As always, this award is a great mixed bag of flavors that represents the exciting technical range of flavors DB has to offer. And this year, no less than three in the top 10 are all from the same album. Let's see how things look when we check out the top five. And the nominees for Best Remix are Alex Perez, Trinity, Skeptical Remix, K Motions featuring Dusky, Hackett, Break Remix, Kings of the Rollers featuring Chimpo, Shella, Halogenics Remix, Subfocus, Last Jungle, Camo and Crooked and Methius Remix, Subfocus, Time Warp, Dimension Remix. Remix Sickness, Hoots for these reboots. <laughs> Let's see how the top three is looking. Third place, Subfocus, Lash Jungle, Cameron Crooked and Methius Remix. Second place, Kings of the Rollers featuring Chimpo, Stella, Halogenics Remix. First place, 
Best Remix 2021, Sub Focus, Time Warp, Dimension Remix. Hello and welcome to Techno Club. This week we'll be exploring the new wave of kick drum fusion in drum and bass. From the 4-4 experiments of acts like Sleepnet, Amanu, Bunshin and the face-melting madness of Mandy Dextrous and their speed bass movement. But first, Psytrance and DMB. Is it a yay? Is it a nay? The voters in the Drum and Bass Arena Awards say yay, and it's a big old gold star to Dimension for creating such a moment. Nice. Seriously, what the hell is going on? One of the late noughties biggest anthems, Sub Focus's Time Warp gets a remix from Dimension, and it's heavily influenced by Psytrance. But it works. I've heard DJs right across the board play it this summer, and it's a reminder that interesting moments always happen in this music when influences come from outside the genre. That's what the jungle drum and bass melting pot was always all about. And there's a lot of this type of fusion going on with all kinds of techno influences and 4-4 things happening right now, with acts like Gyrofield, Bish, Late Sleeper, Forbidden Society, and the acts I mentioned before, all cooking up big 4-4 curveballs. Shouts to them, but the biggest shouts at this particular moment go to Dimension for this win. Surprisingly, it's his first solo award. The only other award he's won was Best Tune in 2018 for Desire, with Sub Focus, who he's remixed right here. I'm sure if this was an actual Psytrance rave when we were in the spirit of things, then I'd find all kinds of significant and meaningful things in this. But it's not. It's DMB, but with big fat kick drums and massive old Psytrance squelches. And it's ruddy good fun. Nice. So congratulations, Dimension. Coming up next on Techno Club, Skibbity freestyling over your favorite electro house anthems and how deep is too deep? We search for the world's most boring minimal techno record. See you after the break. Psytrance, winning at the Drum and Bass Arena Awards. What next? Noisier winning a Best Live Act Award when they don't even play live? Or how about a Beatles song winning the best tune? Oh, hang on a minute. Those things have actually happened. Anyway, moving on. It's time for another big musical moment. It's Best Album. <laughs> And the nominees for Best Album are AMC Void Dimension Organ Polar and Bryson Beneath the Surface Sub Focus Reworks One The Upbeats Not Forever some big, big names in the mix. Sub Focus, Dimension, AMC, The Upbeats, and Polar and Bryson. Let's find out who you love the most. In third place, AMC, Void LP. Second place, Dimension, Organ. First place, Best Album 2021. Sub Focus Reworks 1. Hello and welcome to Album Club. No, seriously, large up the Sub Focus and every remixer involved in his Reworks 1 album. As we've seen, there were some really big old names on that collection. And it was so big that almost half the nominations for the Best Remix Award all came from this album. And like Dimension, who's just scored second place in this award, this is actually Sub Focus's first solo win as well. Big up. So this is the second year running that a remix album has won this award, following ShyFX's Ragamuffin Reloaded album last year. This is interesting and possibly a reflection of how albums are delivered and digested in today's game as big collections of massive tracks with mighty names suiting every taste and every chapter of the night. But don't go thinking that the traditional art of the album is lost. 2021 has been a great year for proper bodies of work. Just looking at the top five alone, 
Dimensions debut album Organ is a great example of an artist exploring their sound and telling a story with their music. The Upbeat's Not Forever album is their best LP so far and really stretches any preconceptions of their sound. AMC experimented on his album by taking to the mic on numerous occasions, while Polar and Bryson's excellent Beneath the Surface is a completely conceptual body of work. Zoom out even further for similarly sick and stately LPs from the likes of Benny L, The Prototypes, Unglued, Fred V, and Rhea and Colette Warren, who I honestly thought would be in the top three, let alone the top five. I think we're going to see a lot more bodies of artistic work as more fruits of the lockdown appear. Things like NC-17's Most Violent Year, New Tones, Little Spaces, Black Barrels, Just Keep My Life, and Fox's Squang Dangs in the Key of Vibes. I could go on and on. There's been some amazing albums this year. And Subfocus's Reworks one is the one that you voted for the most. So big up the Substar and all involved. We are here with Sub Focus. How are you doing, sir? I'm well, man. Excellent, Thanks very much. excellent. Yeah. I've got some really good news for you. Oh, amazing. Here we go. Best Album Drum and Bass Arena oh, Awards 2021. That is amazing, man. Thanks awesome. so much. That, I'm really stoked about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's incredible. It's the second year in a row that a remix album has won. And I mean, it must yeah. be quite interesting hearing because it's such a big collection of some of your most timeless tracks all reworked. What's it like hearing remixes of your work? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a really fun project to start working on. I think um, we talked about it earlier in the year and I basically kind of got the idea when Metric did uh, the remix of X-Ray from mm. uh, for the Ram 25 package. And um, that was like an amazing track in my set. And we were just thinking, yeah, I mean, these songs I made like over 10 years ago now. So there are elements of them that I kind of wanted to like tweak and change and stuff and it was fun to yeah just like uh we were honored to get you know some of my favorite producers to to go in and do special versions of them um we're really lucky that a lot of the people that we approached um said yes and i kind of wanted to make sure that it was just um drum and bass producers doing it and um wanted to kind of get a really wide range of across the scene so really cool that Poland and bryson wanted to do something liquidy for that and then you know, through to people like Boo, who's really coming through some amazing stuff. Yeah, and then, Misanthrop and things like that. Yeah, as well. and then I love Misanthrop's like super techno influenced stuff. Um, and uh, obviously Cameron Crooked and, and Methgis. So, yeah, I mean, there's too many people to mention, but it was just, yeah, it was really cool how sort of everyone, and obviously, you know, through to people I've worked with before, like Dimension. Well, speaking of Dimension, I mean, he won Best Remix as well. So you, you're oh, not wow. going to know this, yeah. Oh my so God. he won Best Remix with his Psytrance version as well. Wow. That's yeah. amazing, man. That's yeah. so sick. Which I thought, you know, I thought that was really interesting because he's just bringing in a completely different element. And as you yeah. know, when you're bringing in other elements into the melting pot, that's when interesting things happen. Isn't Definitely, it? man. Yeah. No, we um, when he was working on that because our studios in the same block, I was like coming to visit him and like seeing how he's getting on, and it was like kind of making me nervous. But also, I was like, it's kind of like the original concept behind the first tune was to sort of like make the rhythms really unusual for drum and bass. So I guess it's a similar, what was cool about his take was it was also the same type of thing. It was like taking it into a new rhythmic territory of super 4-4 four yeah. four kind of thing. I remember interviewing you about Time Warp at the time when I was working for IDJ magazine. And that yeah, was, yeah, I remember that. You yeah. were talking about the influence of going to Cocoon in Ibiza yeah. and stuff like that, really. So that kind of techno influence, really, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, no, that was, that was um, a big sort of influence at the time when I was working on that, my first album was like, uh, discovering like house and techno and like getting inspired from those genres, um, but yeah, so yeah, he's sort of taken like another like subgenre and kind of yeah, to weave, weave that in. Uh, so cool to hear. I mean, yeah, I've got to just thank everybody who got involved in it really because like it's theirs, you know, um, to you know um, the, all the amazing versions that they made is is how we got this. So yeah, definitely, big up to everybody and big yeah. up to yourself for kind of orchestrating that project, really, and curating it. It sounded like you were a kid in a candy store, really, just picking your favourite artists and yeah. overseeing it and bringing it all together. Yeah, like I was saying with um, with the Rob Swan, I, I definitely wanted to be quite, like, hands-on and involved and stuff and, like, um, yeah, gave some feedback where necessary and stuff. But, yeah, I was very much, like, um, carefully kind of trying to curate it all and get a good balance of, like, all the amazing talent that we've got across different sort of subgenres of the scene. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think you smashed it there because at least a third of the best remix category all came from your album, really. That's insane, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, no, thanks so much for to everyone that voted as well, yeah. So I'm wondering now, because, I mean, I don't, you know, you must be working on other stuff as well. Is there anything that you can tell us about kind of Subfocus Productions maybe in 2022? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely, like, sitting on a lot of uh, materials, a couple of remixes been working on and uh, a whole batch of uh, my solo stuff. Awesome, um, awesome, cool. So Subfocus sitting on a load of new material and has got a sold out show in Printworks would have kicked off by the time that you were all watching this. Congratulations once again, Mr. So Subfocus, much, awesome. Thank you to everybody, cheers. Nice one. A remix album winning two years running. Who'd have thought of that? Who knows what next year's awards will bring? While we can't tell the future, it's certainly been a year of reflection for Drum and Bass Arena as we celebrate 25 years in the game, quarter of a century, come on! Feeling nostalgic, we thought we'd look back over the last 13 years of the Drum and Bass Arena Awards and relive some of the many amazing memories we've had so far. Reload, who said that it was me, Roll VT. Welcome to the Drum and Bass Arena Awards. <laughs> back to living in the moment. And what a moment this is. It's time to see who the DMB community voted for best track. So many bangers, so many anthems, vibes for miles as far as the eye can see. And unlike last year, we've actually been able to hear these through the big rigs they were made for. But with so much variety and so many styles and flavors, is there any possible way we could agree on one single best tune, Dave? Jenna, I don't think there's been a Best Tune Award that I've ever really agreed with. So firstly, big up everyone who makes music, full stop. If you make music from the heart and you're putting it out into the world, you are awesome. It's that simple. Now, let's big up everybody who was nominated and got through to the top 10, which is actually a really good list that covers the spectrum from everything from jump up to mainstream bangers and mercifully, low levels of cheese. Great, but much more importantly, it's also the first time that a woman producer has been nominated in this category. So big shouts to Mel who broke through with her debut release this summer in the form of Protagonist. That is amazing and it's also just one of three awards that she's been nominated for this year. She was also up for best artwork and is still in the running for best newcomer. Big up Mel. I have to say, when it comes to diversity, this year's nominations feels like a step back from last year's rather than a step forward. If it wasn't for the unanimous support for Rhea and Colette Warren, who are also in this category with their whiny produced tune Vices, there would be very little female representation. Yet we all know how many women are smashing it. There are way too many to list, but I'm gonna shout out some who've taken my head off with killer sets and productions just in the last few months alone, like Mantra, Gin, Flight, Gyrofield, Lens, Stacy, Viridity, Sabrina, Bad Habits, Frankie D, Kyris, Something Something, Natty Lou, Aspect, Euphonic, Tasha Baxter. That's just off the top of my head. Women are killing the game right now, and I wanna see a lot more nominations for them next year. Back to this top 10, I also want to highlight the ridiculous energy of Turno and Sota with flappers. It's great to see newcomer Sota get some props, and this is actually Turno's third time in this category. Shouts to Alex Perez, who's been in the Best Tune Award for four years running, and then there are the prototypes in K-Motions, who are no stranger to the Best Tune category too. And of course, Camo and Crooked and Matthews, who have all been in this category multiple times and won. 
Finally, Major League shouts to Particle, who's been smashing it lately, and also Donnie's, Debridge, and Jube, who've been lords of the dubplate manor for so long and have been responsible for so many incredible underground tunes, but have never been in this list before. Show Me is a huge tune. Now it's time for the editor to show me, show me the top five nominations. And the nominees for best track are Alex Perez, Burning Babylon. Jubay and Debridge, Show Me. K-Motions, High Note featuring Emily Mackis. Mephius and Camo and Crooked, Sientello. Turno and Sota, Flappers. Pow! What a selection! But who will win? Let's not waste any more time here. Third place. K Motions, I know, featuring Emily Mathis. Second place. Alex Perez, Burning Babylon. First place, best track, 2021. Matthews, Camo and Crooked, Cientelo. It's the second award for Cientelo tonight, the first Spanish vocal track to ever win a Drum and Bass Arena Award. It translates to feel it, and it's clear you have all definitely felt this one. <laughs> I think we're about to hear from the guys in bold right about now. <laughs> we have got Matthews and Camo and Crooked in the building via Zoom. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, chaps. How are you all? You're good. Thanks for having us, man. Oh, Very our good. pleasure. Our pleasure. And it is my pleasure to present not one, but two awards to you. Oh. Here we go. Best oh. artwork and best tune. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> hey. oh, nice one. Nice. Amazing, nice amazing. Money. Obviously for Cientello. Um, so yeah, I mean, how, how do you feel? That's, uh, has it come as a shock to you? Were you hopeful? I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm super happy, you know, um, after this pandemic, um, being able to release music again and then getting this award as well. It's just, you know, it's, it's the best we can, we, can, we can wish for. I'm super stoked, super sick. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's the first tune to ever win an award in the Drum and Bass Arena Awards with Spanish vocals as well, really. So I'm interested in the influences behind C and Tello. Yeah, I mean, we are super into uh, like tech house and, you know, a lot of tech house actually has like Spanish and, and uh, uh, Colombian uh, vocals in there. Um, so we thought, wait a second, nobody has ever really done this within drum and bass. Um, it, would, it would be a really cool touch. And, you know, we always crave to find some new influences and do something new. So we just tried. And, you know, like <laughs> once you find a vocal like this and you're like, okay, yeah, this actually works. You know, it, you know it from the first moment on, you catch the vibe and you kind of yeah. know that this will resonate with yourself and then maybe also with people. And it did, it seems. So yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. It means a lot to us, really. Definitely. Amazing, amazing. And you can, it's a universal vibe, really, isn't it? It doesn't matter what the language is in. You can feel it, literally. Like mm. That's what it translates to, but you can just feel it, really, can't you? Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. I think it's got such a catchy hook, you know, the vocal. Um, people like they hear it once and they sing along. And that that's what the beauty is about uh, this tune, I think. You know, a lot of people can can resonate with the vocal, even though they don't really understand the language. They still sing along. Yeah. It's the vibe, isn't it? It's it's yeah. the it's the, the the moment really translates in energy and, and the vibe's really there, I think. So yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, yeah and music is actually the universal language, you know. It really is. It really is. And especially now, I mean, you touched on it just now. Isn't it great to be out playing shows again and things like that? And just to, to you know, have a track like this, which really kind of captures that feeling of being back out and having freedom again. I mean, since we finished Siente Law, it was always our set opener. And even when it wasn't released, it always went off already. And that's always a good sign. And we, we've been hoping our boys we may be on to a winner and that felt really good. And then the feeling, you know, like we, we premiered it on the uh, Glacier stream and it, we felt there's some tension building up, which is, which is really hard nowadays because there's so many tunes and it's very hard to cut through the noise. But with the release, we had a good feeling about this one and we could see that 
people really liked it on the dance floor and yeah we are totally. glad that I this mean, now comes to an end with an award so awesome Excellent. I mean, it's hard to cut through the noise and even harder to do that before, you know, prior to things opening up. It's even harder to do that when you're just online, really. And you had to, you know, you really grab people's attentions with the Glacier set. And obviously, uh, Marcus and Ryan as well with the set and the hot air balloon and things like that. You had to be creative, really, didn't you, with how you kind of present your sets and get your music out there? Yeah, for sure. You know, we always try to find new ways of doing things. And um, with the Glacier thing, we felt like the whole setting, the surrounding, um, it actually felt right to to implement Martin into that as well. Um, and that was actually the first time we were like, you know what, let's try to play a handful of the dub plates we have lying around. I mean, we have way more, you know, but we kind of try to reveal like one after another and get people ready for the bunch of tunes we're sitting on. And yeah, I think that that was, you know, uh, the whole vibe with with the music and the setting, it was a really nice symbiosis. Definitely. And you just said that you're sitting on lots of stuff. I mean, it's a bit of a dream team. The three of you work really, really well together. I think I've called you a boy band before, haven't I, in an interview? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think our, our friendship, but also our business relationship really strengthened through lockdown as well. You know, the three of us just hang out online all the time. And it just makes so much sense combining our our two or three strengths into one into one sort of music um, project. And um, like Marcus said, we've been working on so much music at the moment, and uh, it's it's just super fun, you know. And uh, I think it, it really translates into into the music as well. At least Should I we hope. spill the beans or not? Yes, yeah, spill some do. beans. Spill some beans. <laughs> Do it. All right. I mean, since we have been working on so much music in the last almost two years, I'd say, um, obviously there has to be a platform for it. So actually, we are. Uh, gonna launch uh, uh, our own label together, uh, Matthews wow. Cameron Crooked, and yeah, um, that's gonna happen next year. We're super excited. Um, wow, brilliant! Is that an exclusive? The then is that an exclusive new piece of news yeah. for the Drum yeah, Bass Arena audience? Awesome! Is, yeah. On that exclusive bombshell, I'm gonna thank you guys. Thank you so much. Congratulations! Best artwork and best tune of the year, Drum and Bass Arena Awards nice 2021, one. Matthews and Camo and Crooked. Big up, excellent. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Big so up, UBS. Yeah, nice morning. morning. Oh, what a night. It's been for Mephtis and Camo and Crooked. And what a year it's been for vocalists. Yes, yes. It's time for one of my own personal favorites in these awards, Best Vocalist. Now, we introduced this award in 2014 to celebrate the often overlooked role of the vocalist and it's been so fulfilling to see singers and MCs get better representation and credit for the vital role they play in this culture. We're seeing more vocalists release albums and have much more of a presence on stage as hosts than ever before. So big up the scene for recognizing something that needed to be done for a very, very long time and big up all the vocalists. Let's see who you guys voted for the most. And the nominees for Best Vocalist are A Little Sound Charlie Bricks Charlotte Haining Degs Katie Coven Wow, some stunning voices right there. All winners to my ears. But let's find out which one you made a winner, baby. Third place, Katie Coven. Second place, A Little Sound. First place, Best Vocalist, 2021, Charlotte Haney. Nominated four times last year, but a winner this year. Huge congratulations to Charlotte Haining. Now, let's hop on over to the Rave Cave for some interviews with Dave. Yes, girl, I'm rhyming. She's a vocalist. She's an MC. <laughs> we got Charlotte Haining in the house. Charlotte, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. And I'm even better now because I can give you some very good news. <gasps> Here we go, best vocalist, oh, Double Bass Arena Awards, 2021, <laughs> there you go. It's all yours, let's put it down there. Thank you. 
Oh my God, look at this. <laughs> oh, thank you. Amazing. Oh, they're so nice. Amazing. Were you expecting that at all? No, I, re I really wasn't. Honestly, I've been nominated for like the last five years, I think. I've worked really hard, tried to work with everyone in drum and bass and still not been given the award. So I'm glad I finally got it. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Because last year you were nominated about, I think it was about four or five nominations last year. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And now this year, yeah. I, I like how it's just come out of the blue almost. Yeah, really. me too, me too. Yeah. Oh, this is this is wicked. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, amazing, amazing. I mean, let's just capture what it's been like for you, really. 2021. It's been a year of two halves, hasn't it? Like yeah. first half lockdown, yeah. and then the second half we've been out and free and been yeah. able to do what we want. How's it been for you? It's been good. Yeah, lockdown gave me a lot of time to um, just be in the studio and write and yeah, write for all kinds of different things. Um, but I'm glad the world is getting more normal again now and raves are back. Like doing the outline tour with Hybrid Minds was amazing. Um, yeah, Brixton Academy was an absolute bucket list and to just stand up there singing my heart out to like 4,000 people, however, however, however many it is, was amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that that side of things is back. Long may it continue. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And you've had them, I and you just said there you write all different types of things. I mean, you know, I would say you're busier in other genres at the moment. The recent releases that you've had have kind of been more in the EDM world, really, haven't they? Yeah, there's been a lot of that kind of stuff, a lot of house, a lot of more commercial type stuff. I'm just writing a lot for other people. So yeah, some of them come out with me singing on it and some of them come out with other people singing on it. But yeah, it's great. I, I think that's brilliant because you've come from drum and bass. So you're bringing that drum and bass attention to detail and the Always. craft and the spirit yeah. across the whole of the mainstream and all yeah. of the other genres and stuff. Bringing that drum and bass to other people, exactly. making them have it. That's, that's amazing. That's what I'm trying to do every session. <laughs> <laughs> I've always got my drum and bass arena t-shirt on, like genuinely. I'm not trying to plug it, but genuinely. Brilliant. Every session I'm wearing that, like. Brilliant. Yay. Representing. Representing. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, wicked. I mean, I think this year and the last few years, really, vocalists are just getting the representation and the recognition and the respect that they deserve. Yeah. Really, I think. It's wicked, honestly. I love to see. It. I'm going to put this down for one second before I hold it again. <laughs> um, yeah, it's wicked. I, I love to see it, honestly. Like all the, there's so many people smashing it. Like Katie Cove, and obviously she won it last year, didn't yeah. she? She's just killing it. It's, I love to see it. A little sound as well. She's smashing it, DJing and singing live. I don't know how they do it. It's like insane. Yeah, um, definitely. Well, yeah. a little sound actually came second, and we've got her. We're interviewing her in a moment as oh, well. Yeah, yeah, wicked. yeah. And what I really love about this award is that it's so interchangeable every year. Like all vocalists are smashing it, but it's not one that you could ever predict as no, well. No, I know. Yeah, sometimes more MC leaning artists win it. Sometimes vocalist like singers win it. Yeah, it's 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 great. It's great that vocalists are just being so well represented in in the scene. I love to see it. I love to see people doing it live as well. And I'd love to see more of it. I'd love to see more promoters putting themselves out there a little bit more, booking more singers to come and sing at things alongside an MC because it really does add another level to things and it like does. adds to the euphoria of the night and stuff. And yeah. yeah. It makes it more of a show then as well, yeah. really. And especially, yeah, when you've got a singer and an MC going mm -hmm. like toe to toe on the stage, it really yeah. makes much more of an the event. The energy's really. just there from start to finish, we're just bouncing off each other, yeah. Brilliant, so where is your energy being invested into next then? What can we expect from you next? <laughs> oh, I don't know, loads, loads more music. I'm always writing, I'm always recording stuff. So yeah, I can never sit still for too long. So yeah, I'm, I'm back in the studio this afternoon and just constantly writing. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. That's brilliant. Bringing that drum and bass spirit across the whole of the dance music board. Always. That's amazing. Charlotte Haining, congratulations. Oh, thank you very thank much. You so much. Charlotte I'm Haining, so awesome. <laughs> We've got a little sound in the house. How are you doing? I'm really good, thank you. How awesome. are you? Awesome. I'm really, really good. And I'm really pleased to tell you you've come second place in best vocalist. What? Yeah, <laughs> no second way. place. Second that place. That is actually mad. Amazing. It's just been incredible for you, really. The last two years have just been. <laughs> haven't they? Oh, it's been a bit crazy, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I've still not stopped. It's mad. <laughs> Incredible. And especially now with, like, performing as well, since we've been able to open up since July as well. How's that been? Because you're properly doing your own shows and playing and singing. Um, that literally went from, like, a live PA set to then incorporating DJing, like, throughout lockdown as a hobby. And then, yeah, being able to put both together, I've finally been booked across the country. And, yeah, the opportunities are amazing now. And, yeah. That's fantastic. 
there is a real new movement of that. Like Rhea is also doing it as yeah. well, and also Inja is doing it as oh, well. Yeah. Like vocalists being able to perform, you're making the DJs redundant. This is awesome. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great because I was at Inja's album launch, and yeah, I was so like interested to see that he was doing the same, and it really works. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, the creative options must be, you know, that are amazing really there for you to be able to do whatever you like then as a performer. You're not relying on somebody else. Yeah, you can exactly take it to that. You want. Yeah, yeah. More independence. Yeah. yeah, especially that. Yeah. Yeah. So, what have been the highlights then for you as a performer since coming out of lockdown and stuff? I think definitely seeing like people loving the shows that I'm putting on. So, like at first, obviously, I'm singing my songs, but over lockdown, people have listened to them a lot more than I've thought. So I've got people singing songs back to me at the front row, and like that is where it finally sinks in, and you're like, this is this is it. This yeah. is yeah, it's yeah. all worth it. Definitely. Real life humans. Hundred like... percent. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Finally. <laughs> Incredible, incredible. Yeah. It just seems like now is just a really exciting time for vocalists, really, in terms of kind of credit where it's due, representation and things like that. Like, people are really championing the vocalists as they should have been doing for years, really. Definitely, yeah. And, like, literally everyone that was nominated are literally my favourite vocalists. Like, I listen to all of their music and, like, it's just mad that I am placed second. Like, no, it doesn't mean anything. They're still, un like, incredible. But, like, yeah, it just feels mad that up against all the people that I love, I'm up there. Yeah. Well, Charlotte Haining came first and we were interviewing her just now. Um, I, you know, I was saying to her as well, like, what's really exciting about this award is that you can't predict, you know, you can't predict it. There are certain awards where you kind of can, you think, right, there's, there's a favourite there. But, like, everybody is absolutely smashing it and it could have been anybody's really in that list. I think. Yeah, and that's mad. Yeah, Charlotte definitely deserves that. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I believe that you've got an EP coming out on Born on Road as well now, haven't you? Yes, yeah, so that has definitely been in the works for a while. Um, but hopefully Hopefully it's going to be out sort of early next year, finally, fingers crossed, you know, the, the tracks are finally getting finished and played out, so. Excellent, Hopefully. excellent. Cool, and you're back on the road now, I mean, where, where is the furthest place that you've taken your large little sound? Um, <laughs> well, it's either Leeds, um, which I've played a couple of times now with the Born and Road guys, um, or down in Cornwall, which I also played the tour with Born and Road, so. Brilliant. That's yeah. pretty much the length and the breadth of the country, yeah. really, there. <laughs> really long. Have you got other exciting things in store for 2022, then, that you're able to reveal? Um, I'm playing the Prague Weekender with Dazed, so Brilliant. that'll be taking it a little bit further. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I've got a lot of exciting stuff, but not a lot that I am allowed to disclose, so... Yeah, that's always it's the, worst the way. kind of stuff, but yeah, we're super excited about it. Excellent. Have you got any big ups or anything like that, really, for people who've been part of your journey so far? Um, I want to say big ups to Born on Road, 100%. Literally, without them, I wouldn't have the opportunities that I've had. Um, yeah, they're amazing. Also, big ups to like a lot of the vocalists. There's Emily Mackis, Coven, who's constantly supporting me. Um, Ruth Royal, you know, Degs, they're all amazing. Inja, yeah, literally, I love them all. And yeah, without that sort of community of vocalists, I don't think it would be such a nice place to work. And yeah, yeah. we're all literally bigging each other up constantly. That's something that I've noticed this year is just there's so much support for each other, really. And there's just a great kind of just, yeah, it's not, it's, it's not competition. It's just a, like a really great community of, yeah, singers and songwriters and things 100%, like that. 100%, yeah. Definitely. Excellent, brilliant. A little sound there. Second place, best vocalist, Drummer Bass Arena Awards 2021. Thank you so much. There you go, thanks. Well, that was pretty darn cool. Words and wisdom from two of the hottest singers in the game. One who's been smashing it for 10 years and another who's at the start of a beautiful journey. But now we come on to one of the hotly contested awards of the show. It's a list that barely repeats a name each year and always gets some of the most votes of the whole awards. It's time for the future. It's best newcomer. <laughs> Dave's going to be breaking this down in just a moment. But first, let's see who the top five nominations are for best newcomer this year. And the nominees for Best Newcomer are... Crossy. Don Whiting. Lee Matthews. Mosey. The Caracal Project. So, none of these artists have ever been in this category before, and there's a lot of hype around all of them. 
I'm just gonna cut straight to the chase here. Third place, Lee Matthews. Second place, The Caracal Project. First place, Best Newcomer 2021, Dom Whiting. Oh, good golly, good gosh. Dom Whiting, a man none of us had heard of before March this year. His activity has been off the chain. Putting the brakes into brake beat, he's done really well. I really need to get a grip on these bike puns. It's just a vicious cycle. Seriously, all silly jokes aside, this is a unique set of circumstances. And while Dom only played his first club gig at Printworks since doing these streams, He's been a massive ambassador for this music. You can check out any of his streams and in the comments you'll find converts who'd never really taken the time to appreciate drum and bass now checking his streams and calling themselves fans. I love that. We'll be catching up with Dom in a moment, but first I need to explore this top five even more. Firstly, bonjour to the Caracal Project, a truly forward-thinking individual who's exploring all kinds of fusions right now Young Frenchman Felix has been doing bits this year and recognition like this is well deserved. Secondly, cheer to Lee Matthews. This is the first time an act outside Europe has done so well in this category. Representing New Zealand, these guys are a huge deal down under and their reputation is going global. I've commented a few times on the whole New Zealand versus UK situation over the years. UK will always be best. But these guys represent a whole thriving homegrown scene out there, which we were all so jealous of at the start of the year. And Mosey. To be honest, I thought this award was all his. Not just because of the awesome music that he makes or the hilarious videos that he's made, but also because I've not seen so many people in the scene get behind someone in the way that they did with Mosey. Guys like Uncle Doug's and Chef and Serum were all asking people to support him in the awards, and that was beautiful to see. I think Mosey has been a breath of fresh air this year, and I'm really sorry I called you a David Guetta lookalike on the radio. And of course, Crossy. Representing the new generation, he's been behind some ridiculous heaters this year and is another well-deserved Best Newcomer nominee who I hope we'll see in this category again next year. And just to zoom out that little bit further, shouts to everyone nominated in this award. Last year it was the most female-dominated newcomer list we've ever had, and this year it's our most international newcomer list we've ever had, with the likes of Sri Lanka's Irie, Belgium's Heerith, and Russian Nelva all in the top 10 which is actually a top 12 because it was a four-way tie. That's how popular this award is. Next year, let's see even more activity in one super exciting, diverse, and global list. But now, let's saddle up and chat to DMB Easy Rider, Dom Whiting. We are here with Dom Whiting. How are you doing, sir? Not bad. Um... Didn't turn up on the bike today, but yeah, other than that, we're all good. I'm literally <laughs> going to ask if you came on your bike or not. You've let us down, but I'm not going to let you down because I've got some incredible news. You have won yep. Best Live Stream Set oy, oy. and Best Newcomer. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. That is wow. crazy. I mean, this has been quite the story of the year, really. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're unbreakable. We yeah. always say that they're bulletproof. Yeah, yeah keep them nice and they safe. They feel pretty hefty. That would have definitely like broke my foot if it just broke my foot. Your feet should probably be insured if you're using them to ride on the bike and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> You'd think so. But... Yeah, but uh, this has been quite the story of the year, really, for you. You've had a phenomenal year, haven't you? Yeah, it's been pretty hard to put into words, like from me just like riding around Marlow on my Jack Jones and then jumping in the river and then like a couple of rides later. You know, like there's a couple of hundred people with me and yeah, the progression's been, it's been crazy, but like, I just love the whole, how many aspects to the ride it is, like from, you know, the age group, there's like, just like people with families there and, you know, the numbers and just mental health has been a big part of it as well. So yeah, in summary, it's been really good. Oh, that's phenomenal. And that's what I really love as well. And the representation all across Britain as well. You know, you must have been to some, you know, places that you've not yet been able to go to. I know you've been in my hometown in Cardiff and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, Cardiff was, um, Cardiff was, when was that? April, May? Yeah. It was a little while ago, but yeah, Cardiff was actually at the time, like 
the biggest ride until I think London. So, yeah, hopefully I'll be back soon to, to Wales. Yeah. The London ride was really quite phenomenal to watch, really. And that's when I realised you must have a team as well. So big up your team, people riding ahead of you and stuff like that and making sure that the traffic is OK and guiding you through these cities that you've never even been in sometimes. Yeah, I mean... Uh, one, uh, one thing that nobody can predict is the potholes in the road. So, you know, if anyone's listening back to the mixes and they hear a mistake, it's nine times out of ten because of the poor roads. But, yeah, um, <laughs> the the rides are special and, like, shout out to everyone that's came to all of them and everyone that's supported it for, you know, such a long time, a short period of time. And, you know, we've got two awards yeah, from it. I so. think it's phenomenal. Great. As you also, I mean, you did do a kind of techno one as well, but drum and bass, it's particularly on drum, drum and bass, has really caught people's imagination and caught your imagination as well, I think. Really. Yeah, I mean, like, I think the reason why drum and bass works so much is, I know we touched on it with a lot of people, but it's sort of the get up and go, like, you know, yeah. hop on the bike, fast paced. Um, and everyone's a bit more, you know, the drum and bass community is like pretty raggos. So, yeah, like, um, I think techno and drum and bass, like, although I really like it, I think drum and bass is suited for the ride and it's proved to be yeah. the winner of the genre. I think so. You've really just, you've caught people's attention and energy and things like that. And it's just been an exceptional year. What's been the craziest thing that's happened since all of these have blown up for you? Um, obviously, I don't know. I, I, I don't feel like... Obviously, I feel really good and everything's happened, but I don't feel like I'm, I'm ready to settle for what what this year or what this last few months have, have been like. So yeah. it's hard for me to put a pinpoint on such, um, you know, an amount of things that have happened in such a short period of time. Um, London Ride definitely, like, was up there, and that was quite a crazy thing for me to experience, like, just the sheer amount of people that came. But also the off-the-bike experiences, like, I've managed to, you know, go and film some stuff, like, Rudimental, and, you know, it's opened up a lot more other doors, which maybe I, I wouldn't have had if I was just at the garage still <laughs> fixing cars. So, yeah, um, wow. it's hard for me to tell you what's been the best yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have to let it settle a little bit there, I think, really. Um, and in terms of kind of, you know, what, what next then? Are you going to try and take the bike rides across Europe and things like that when we're able to travel in a bit more? Yeah, I mean, um, I've literally just recently been planning, like, the Europe trip. Obviously, my main um, concern with, like, all the bike rides is whatever. If it rains, it's still possible, but let's be honest, no one really wants to be out um, in the rain on a bike. So yeah, like the next thing is definitely to take it to Europe. Um, Berlin and Amsterdam obviously going to be the main ones as they're like bike cities. Um, so hopefully we'll get on with that next year. Brilliant. Berlin and Amsterdam, Don Whiting is coming for you. Amazing. Very wicked. It's Don Whiting, double award winner. And he's also up for best DJ as well, so we might be seeing him later on. Thank you very much, Don. Great. Sticking with the Best Newcomer Award for just one second, we had a huge amount of posthumous votes come in for Jay Diz, a talented soul who was just breaking through and turning heads left, right and centre on labels like OTC, Audio Addict, and Deep in the Jungle. We lost him way too soon, and it was beautiful to see how many of his friends and peers voted for him. Jay Diz, you will never be forgotten. Rest in peace. Easy people, this is DJ Hybrids, and I just wanted to say congrats to all the award winners and nominees tonight. Um, but it's also important that we pay tribute to people who are no longer with us in the scene. Uh, so I just wanted to give a special big up to James J. Diz, who tragically passed away a few months ago. I had the pleasure of working with James. Um, we released his uh, debut EP on my label, Deep in the Jungle Records, earlier this year. Um, and he was a lovely, positive lad, very talented. Um, and I'll always remember how happy he was when his EP got to number three in the chart. And he actually went out and got part of the artwork tattooed on him as a little celebration. Um, so yeah, big up to Jay Diz, um, you know, he'll, he'll live on forever through his music. Um, and yeah, big up to everyone and I hope you enjoy the rest of the awards. So much love there. Jay Diz, you'll never be forgotten. Now on to another special tribute to the foundation and permafrost of the scene. It's the special place where we collect and celebrate legends on a yearly basis. Currently home to Goldie, GQ, Andy C, DJ Hype, Groove Rider, Fabio, Mampy Swift, Brian G, Jumpin' Jack Frost, Spirit, Stevie Hyper D, Marcus Intellects, Randall, Diane Charlemagne, and Chemistry. 
and now another certified legend and pioneer of the game. Representing Leicester and the world of drum and bass, a man who's been holding things down since long before Jungle was even Jungle. It's the man originally known as DJ Scratchenstein, but you could call him Leroy. It's DJ SS. We've got DJ SS in the house. Mr. Leroy, how are you? I'm very blessed, man. Thank you. You're even more blessed, man. You know, We've got some excellent you. news for you. You have been voted by a panel of industry insiders for the Hall of Fame Award. DJ SS in oh. the Hall of Fame. No. Yes. Way. No way. <laughs> wow. Yes. Go on. Oh my days. Yes. No. <laughs> Amazing. Mate. Wow, 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 wow. Honestly, big up, thank you for that. It's a representation of history and drum and bass that I want to say big shout out to my inspiration, Groove Rider, because if it wasn't for Groove Rider, SS wouldn't be here, and it's that simple. He's supporting me from day one, yes. and he's been pivotal. And I want to say a big shout out to Simon Baseline Smith as well, and Mickey Finn, these people that should be getting these things, you know, they've contributed a lot to the scene. So I want to say a big shout out to those guys as well. Amazing. Part of the family. Amazing. That's absolutely great. It's a real it's shame in, that we can't be giving you an award this in person because you're actually in Canada on tour at the moment, really. And that's, I mean, that's part of your legacy. It's like the world of drum and bass. You have been one of the ambassadors who really pushed jungle drum and bass around the world on an international level, really, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for real. It's, um, it's a blessing because there's so much talent um, all over. No matter what you go, drum and bass is represented. Like I say, I'm in Canada now, and the scene is small but great over here. You know, there's a tri-state connection. And it's like this music, you think about this music that we've built, drum and bass, how it's, it's amalgamated all the world and made this community of people come together as one. It's the importance of it is... If the story hasn't been told correctly, in my opinion, because it's so massive, you know what I mean? Yeah. It changes people's lives. So I want to say big shout to all the people worldwide representing my crew in Russia, art, you know, you know, profit, the whole crew representing drum and bass worldwide, baby. Amazing, amazing. I mean, I think it's too global. You can't tell the story. It's lots, it's many, many, many stories. It's many individual stories. It is, like you say, it's a global thing. And every area have got their own little community, which you're part of, really. And what I love is, like, you know, the kind of promoters who look after you in these places who've been, you know, flying the flag, right, thousands and thousands of miles yeah. from its spiritual home in the UK. And th these are the people who yeah. kind of, you know, they keep it alive around the world, don't they? One thousand percent. It's it, you even in 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 the parts where you wouldn't think drum and bass is drum and bass is there represented, and and the whole idea about world of drum and bass. That's the reason I didn't call it formation because the story was bigger than me. Formation. It was representing the world of drum and bass sound. So it had to be able to be a chameleon and change its spots. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And continue grow through history and time and. Even now, you, you see scenes of new talent coming through, which is amazing. It, I think drum and bass is the biggest it's been since day dot. Yeah. When you to look at audiences and events, it's insane. I think so of too. what we did. I you think know what so I mean? too, man. And you know Formation is part of that. Yeah. One of the longest standing, most consistent labels. I mean, you've given so many of huge artists, headline artists, their first break and their first releases and stuff. The Formation story alone is just something incredible, really, isn't it? Yeah, for real. I, I, like I said, I've been blessed to work with so many artists from day dot. I, I was a kid with a dream and I wanted to give another kid a dream. So that was my thing. I never signed established artists. I never looked for people that had deals anywhere else. I wanted to bring somebody from the grassroots and bring them through and give them an opportunity because that's what building an artist is all about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Giving the fresh talent opportunities, yeah. high aspects and you know, the, the history of what we, the artists that we brought, um, brought through just goes on and on and on. It just continues. Oh, it really and does. I'm it really, really does. Happy and, blessed. and that links into what you were saying. You know, the first big shout out you gave was Groove Rider there, who gave you that opportunity. Yeah. Like you said, you know, when you came down, you came down from Leicester down to London, and Groove Rider totally uh, took him, uh, took you under his wing, didn't he? One hundred percent. And he, he, if you look at if you look at the history of Groove Rider from fresh from your bad companies, you know, 
your optical, you used to work in the studio with optical. And the connection through the Fabian Groove Rider show, there's so many talent that came through that made change history. Do you know what I'm saying? And I've got to say a special shout out to my good friend, Simon Baseline Smith. I used to go and listen to him when I was a kid. I used to be in a venue thinking, wow, I want to be like him one day. <laughs> and he doesn't get the recognition that he deserves. So I would say big shout out to Simon. Also, Mickey Finn, when we started, there was probably only 10 DJs not even less than 10 DJs on the circuit that are still doing it now. Yeah. That stuck to the hardcore drum bass kind of vibe. And, yeah. you know, it's what it's, Mickey Finn calls like, the it's permafrost. The it's the permafrost of jungle yeah. drum and bass. It's the foundation. And the Hall of Fame represents every single year in the Drum and Bass Arena Awards. So I'd say it's only a matter of time before Simon and before Mickey Finn yeah. and, and many other pioneers yeah. are all welcomed into the Hall of Fame. So congratulations again, Mr. SS. Here's your awards. Thank you, We're going to give it to you thank in you. person when you come thank back you. to the God UK. Bless. Enjoy the rest of your tour in Canada. Thank and thank you so much. Big up, man. Thank you. God bless. Thank God you. bless. Wow. Big up. <laughs> nice wow. one. What a legend. SS, we salute you, sir. Now, as we wrap up with the final Big Three Awards, it's time to salute the MC, one of the most vital ingredients in the jungle drum and bass cooking pot. I mean, without an MC, is it even a rave? I don't think so. Now, as we mentioned last year, 2020 and the first half of 2021, were especially difficult times for MCs who were born to perform and lively up the dance. So it's been great to see the mic controllers back on the road doing what they do best. And I have to say, this year's top nominations have been really excited and covered the full range of MC styles, including X-Man's first time in the top 10 since 2018 and Tom Piper's first time in the top 10, full stop. Well deserved, bro, and big up the Manchester family. What would be really sick now, though, is to see some of the gal them who's been smashing it, like Maddie V, Wiser, Enemy, Stars, and of course, Chickaboo, who's been on this thing from day. Anyway, respect and respect to these five MCs you guys voted for the most. And the nominees for Best MC are... Degs. We call this bubble dub. Dynamite MC. X Man. Inja. Ton Piper. Bang! Woo, scared you, didn't I? Big names in the blend, but where will this end? Let's find out. Third place, X Man. Second place, Dynamite MC. First place, Best MC 2021, Inja. Ninja, you ninja. Yes, mate. Dave is with that beautiful human being right now. We've got Inja in the house. I'm smiling, I'm waving, I'm giving you <laughs> Best MC. <laughs> best MC, Drum and Bass Arena Awards 2021. You. Your fourth Best MC Award in a row. I'm trying not to swear and say like rude things, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all happening in here. <laughs> that is nuts. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Brilliant. you. Thank you. Thank Brilliant. You. Go on. Wow. I mean, uh, how do you feel now? Because you're a bit of a pro at accepting this award in different <laughs> guises. I mean, we did the video, you did a video ex ex um, acceptance last year yeah, um, because of COVID and yeah, stuff like that. So it's, it's been a while since I've joined you on the couch like this. Yeah, right? I know. It's, well, it's been a while for all of us, actually, yeah. interacting with people, isn't yeah. it? So it's like, you know, it's all coming back. Or, or no, we're finding a new path and a new world, like, from it all. So, yeah, it's great. But, yeah... <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> man. You. Really, really well deserved as well. I think it's been a really, it's been an amazing Sorry. year for you. Mom, Dad, yes. baby girl. <laughs> 
<laughs> just have to get the important ones out of the way. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. I mean, this year kind of started with you with um, New Zealand, really, didn't it? Yeah. How yeah, was it that? I mean, uh, it was it was phenomenal. Um, I got to go over there and and learn a new skill and try a whole new thing, um, which was great. And they were really accepting of it, and they loved it, and it was great. Like, yeah, I got to uh, I started the This Is Inja show out there as like a precursor for um, for what I wanted to try and do, yeah, and, and yeah. it worked. Yeah, the <laughs> lucky New Zealand crowd. They were the first people to hear the Smile and Wave uh, yeah. material, really. Yeah, yeah, they? yeah. They were the first people to um, get any of it really um and yeah they were just so accepting of it and it was lovely it was a beautiful thing brilliant yeah because i remember announcing the album on ukf and the, the video footage that you sent over just look because at the time like just raving seemed so alien to all of us i mean yeah. we weren't even doing sit down raves at the time we were in that horrible third lockdown yeah. and just to see you bouncing up and down behind the decks as well <laughs> what an incredible experience what an incredible way to start the year really i know it was it was it was just it's just phenomenal man just the fact that like you know to get over there, uh, going through all the loops to get over there, and then just to be able to live and exist and play music to people live, like that, like, like more than anything, just just like people's reactions, because yeah. that's what, like you know, as much as like we have all the streaming worlds which are amazing, like it, this is dance music. Yeah. And we want to see people dance to the music or know if the music's good enough for them to dance to or not. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, just on that factor, it was, it was amazing. Brilliant. Like, pick up the agents and the promoters out there in Australia and New Zealand. Thank you. Absolutely. And big up the Kings of the Rollers show as well. Jeez. I mean, Back to the Future. You've been seeing people dance, <laughs> thousands of them. That show, that was real FOMO, I think, for a lot of us there. And big up anybody who went to support that show. How was that? Printworks was, it was a dream. Um, it's taken me a long while to even start to compute it. Like, I still can't, like, you know, we've we've built something and, you know, we've, we're... We've built it to the point where it's that, where it's print works now. <laughs> That's like that in itself is nuts yeah. to sell that out, like for all of us. And you know, I can only speak on behalf of the guys, but it's like it's hard work and dedication and just mastering the crafts. Yeah, definitely. And you all are craft masters. And I think I see Mickey Finn posted. Um, it was like next stop Wembley. <laughs> and then you can see that. I mean, like Wembley's happening I haven't now. Seen in, that. I haven't seen that. <laughs> Drum and bass is happening in Wembley now. Thank you very much to Andy C. I mean, that is I mean? the next Thank you, level. Andy. <laughs> like, yeah, real talk. Like, I mean, I mean, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> like, one step at a time in it. Like, Wembley's like a whole different place, isn't it? But, but back yeah. to Smile and Wave as well, because I mean, I think that just kind of wraps up the year, really, for you know, for you and just because that that was a result of lockdowns as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, big up. Whiny, thank you to Whiny. Yes. Like, most importantly, for the most amazing production and hospital for the platform, like, you know. But, yeah, it was just it was just an accumulation of my feelings and words um, with Whiny's music, and it just, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. I love it. I love it. So where are you smiling and waving next? <laughs> um, you're putting me on the spot now. Yeah, I can't yeah, even yeah. think. Um, I, can't, I can't even think right now. You're smiling but... and waving back home with your fourth yes. Drum Base Arena Award. Best MC 2021. It's Inja. Thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Inja, best MC four times in a row. Yes, bruv. Big love to you. Now, let's smile and wave. To Dave, who's going to break down this penultimate category. Best producer, where am I waving? Um, like, where is Dave? Dave? Yes, yes, Jenna. Best producer is an interesting one. One half of the top 10 is pretty solid and hasn't changed much in a good few years, with regular names like Camo and Crooked, Alex Perez, Serum, Break, and more recently, Boo, have been in this list for quite a few years now. But the other half changes vastly. For example, last year we saw the likes of Calibre, Muzz, K9 and Halogenics. The year prior to that we saw Eni, Zardonic, Chase and Status and Subfocus. Even Mephus' name isn't consistently in this list. So this year for new names we have Blade Runner, The Prototypes and Polar and Bryson, none of whom have been nominated in this category before, and they've all delivered massiveness this year. Big up! We also have Turno and Dimension, both of whom were last spotted in this category in 2018. Dimension's had a great award so far, having won Best Remix and come second place for Best Album. Turno has been nominated for a whole bunch of awards too, and is still in the running for Best DJ. 
Both have had big years. Then there's Amanu, who's had a great year too, but across other genres, he's actually only released one drum and bass tune this year. So what is it about this award that makes it change so much? At first I wondered if it was albums, but only three artists in the top 10 have released albums this year. Then I wondered if it was the pure velocity of releases, but there's not a lot of correlation there. Some are very active releases, like Turno. Others, like Break, have been very much less is more. It's not even how active these people are on social media. Some guys like Serum bang on about biscuits and snails all day, while you'd be lucky to get more than one moody pose from Dimension every season. Whatever it is that makes this list so different and varied, I hope it stays that way and gets even more varied in years to come. So let's see who the top five nominated acts are this year. And the nominees for Best Producer are... Alex Perez. Break. Camo and Crooked. Dimension. Imanu. Wow, this one's too much. Let's find out who the best producer of 2021 is right now. Third place, Alex Perez. Second place, Dimension. First place, best producer 2021, Camo and Crooked. Camo and Crooked, their third award this evening. They're with Dave in the Rave Cave right now. Let's see what they're saying. Camo and Crooked are back in the building via Zoom, live and direct from Austria. How are you doing again, chaps? We are doing this far too frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, thank you. <laughs> excellent, you? excellent. Well, I've got more good news for you. Obviously, you've just won um, Best Artwork and Best Tune alongside Matthews. And together, you've won Best Producer. Drum and Bass Aww. Arena Awards 2021 Best Producer. <laughs> hey. Oh, my God. Oh, my Congratulations. God. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I have to here. say something like, yeah. you know what? I wish we could win the whole boy band thing, like uh, Matthews and Cameron Crooked, because, you know, most of the stuff we've done recently is with him. So we'll probably, on our half, just cut it in half and give half of it to him. <laughs> oh, brilliant. You need to do it. I mean, it's pretty robust glass. I reckon he could do it with some type of, I don't know, glass cutting material. If you do, please do a video of that. I'd love to see an award getting <laughs> sliced in half. But yeah, big up, Matthews, because you have, I mean, all of the work that you've been doing in the last kind of 18 months or so has been, you know, as, as well, yeah, we, we keep saying boy band, let's stick with boy bands. Like, old so. man band. <laughs> old man <laughs> bands. Brilliant, but this is, I mean, this is your third award of this year, and I think it's your fourth time now winning Best Producer as well. You won it in 2017, 2013, and exactly 10 years ago in 2011 as well. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to like the people listening to our music and, you know, voting for us online. So thanks for that. And, you know, it's just a nice sign uh, that people like our music. You know, you never know, like being best producer or not, nobody can really tell. But it's a sign that people so like to support you and like your music. And that's that's a really nice sign. I gotta to say, get, though, so like, thanks there's so much strength out there also from the new kids on the block, you know. Shout outs to everyone uh, that keeps grinding because obviously we know how it is to stay up there in terms of production. The level is super high and it gets higher every year when you think you've kind of reached the limit. There's a new kit that shows you how it's been done. And, you know, it, yes. it's, it is a, a nice competition. Um, but that's the beauty yeah. of the drum bass community. We all share our secrets and stuff like that. So, yeah, shout out to the whole no, drum I think bass that's game. Great. I think that's great. And that's a really, really good shout out. And it is unique to drum and bass. The production levels are ridiculously high and that's a really unique characteristic. I think it's great that the newer generations are sharing the secrets as well and sharing studio tips. So everybody gets elevated then, don't they? Definitely. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, next year it will be another level again. You know, yeah. when you think you've reached the limits, you're always wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always something new to learn. There's always something new to do. And that's the whole idea of what you've been doing as well with Martin, isn't it, really, is making sure that you don't cover any old tracks, not repeating yourself or anything, keeping it fresh. Exactly. Well, 
I guess it's all about learning and and that's the beauty of it. We can learn from each other. And as Marcus said as well, from the new guys, there's so much knowledge out there. It, like it's a never ending story and you just want to, you know, get better and better and break your own limits. And yeah, it, it's like a fun game then that gets harder, the better you get. And But I guess we all like the competition. Yeah, I can yeah. already tell you though, Mark my words, Martin's going to win next year because he's insane right now. Guys, yes. cooking up so much stuff, like crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah I think so. When he's returned to the stuff, you know, on, the stuff on Critical has been absolutely amazing oh, yeah. as well. Insane. And I was going to say, I mean, if you've got any kind of solo stuff that you've been doing when you haven't been in old man band, stroke boy band, super group mode. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely releasing something on that new label next year, you know. I think we're going to prioritize the call-up tunes first and then going to go back to solo tunes. Uh, but we are definitely have something cooking as well, of course. That's fantastic news. Well, there we go. So that's your third award of the Drum and Bass Arena Awards 2021. Thank you so much for joining us on Zoom. And we'll leave you to carry on hatching your plans for your label and all exciting things for 2022. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody, Camo and Crooked, Best Producer, Drum and Bass Arena Awards 2021. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Awesome. What a year it's been for Camo and Crooked. Huge congratulations to the boys who, like Hospital, have picked up three trophies tonight. And of course, Matthews, who picked up two of those titles as well. Big love, fellas. Congratulations to you. And Camo and Crooked are also in the running for the final award of the night, Best DJ. It's the big one we always end on. And even though it's only had two different winners so far since launching these awards in 2009, it's still one of the most interesting as the rest of the top 10 is always changing, especially this year as Dom Whiting appears once again. Not content with voting in for Best live stream Set and Best Newcomer, you guys also nominated him Best DJ. The place where Marky, Noisier, Turno and Boo duke it out alongside the likes of Andy C, AMC, Friction, Alex Perez and Camo and Crooked. Could this be the biggest shocker of the night? I know a lot of people online will have something to say about it. So let's find out who's in the top five. And the nominees for Best DJ are AMC. Alex Perez, Andy C, Camo and Crooked, Noisia. Okay, okay, Don Whiting will not be winning Best DJ, but one of these five acts will. And it's a very similar scenario to 2020. The only difference being, Noisier is in that list instead of Muzz, which is a nice touch as it's Noisier's last official year. Shouts to them. Shouts to Alex Perez, Camo and Crooked, and of course, the men always bringing an A-game, Andy C and AMC. Let's find out which one of them will be crowned Best DJ 2021 in the Drum and Bass Arena Awards. Third place, Camo and Crooked. Second place, Andy C. First place, Best DJ 2021, AMC. Three years deep, it's AMC. Huge congratulations to one of the most ferocious DJs on the planet, now about to be interviewed by one of the least ferocious interviewers on the planet for the last time of the night, calling DCJ, that's Dave Colombo Jenkins to you. We've got AMC in the house. Don't forget the dots and don't forget to give you Best DJ 2021 Double <laughs> Arena Awards. Congratulations, man, oh, congratulations. Geez. Oh, mate, that's fucking amazing. Shit, can I swear? Well, you have now. <laughs> Twice. Oh, mate, that's fantastic. Do you know, I, I, if I'm honest, I really wasn't expecting that this year. I really wasn't. Like, there's been some, I mean, people have been doing some incredible things, you know? Yeah. Um, so just to have this in my hand is 
pretty fucking fantastic. Well, we can never assume <laughs> things. You can never assume things and everything changes with the awards. I mean, there are some favourites and stuff, but it's been an intense year as well because it's all been squeezed into New Zealand and then the last four months, hasn't it? Pretty much, yeah. But I managed to get myself into Australia as well. So I was lucky. Like My whole timing of everything has been incredibly lucky. Um, to be able to get out of here when we were in lockdown to go do a tour in New Zealand and then finish in New Zealand and go to Australia and do as much as I could in New Zealand before, I mean, sorry, Australia, and do as much as I could in Australia before Australia, Australia went down again. Uh, and then when I came back here, it was like two weeks and then suddenly everything was open again. Yeah. So, like, massively lucky. So, um, yeah, I'm a... Uh... Amazing. And an album along the way as well, <laughs> dropping singles <laughs> casually just <laughs> one a month all the way through this, building up to the release of Void as well, which was also up for various awards as well, including Best Artwork and Best Album. Yeah, yeah, no, do you know what? I want to shout out to Jack Springbeck. He's done everything for me art-wise, from logos to pack shots to... He's literally done everything for me since day dot. And, um, yeah, the guy smashes it. And I think it's really... I was so pleased to see him, uh, his artwork for my... Void album nominated in the uh, awards. So, um, yeah, Brilliant. really, really Brilliant. Him, man. Jack is a very talented artist, but you're a very talented DJ. I mean, you've played some crazy looking sets, including one from the kind of bungee jumping uh, New Zealand <laughs> and stuff like that. I mean, how, what's been a highlight for you when, you when you look back now? And it must just be really intense, really, just thinking about it, having it taken away for so long to just throw yourself back into it. Every set I've seen you play, you just look like you're buzzing. Yeah, I mean, um, but it was kind of weird because the first set that I did back after everything was happening was in Hamilton in uh, New Zealand. And I'd just been in quarantine for two weeks with um, Brucey, Benny L and Inja and Turno, etc. And I'm not going to lie, that was kind of difficult, you know. Um, and uh, we were all really helping each other get through it. We was all in like a WhatsApp group, etc. So when we all got to do this first show back, I'm not joking, like I think there was... There was a lot of tears, man. Like, um, I came off the stage and I just wanted to burst into tears myself. It was, just, it's, it was it's such an amazing feeling. But yeah, then everything since then has just been like, you know, it's been, uh, you, you appreciate it so much more. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's been, I was just had a flashback ride. to that tour in New Zealand, seeing all the photos coming up on Facebook and just the amount of cheesy grins. I've never seen the drum and bass community <laughs> show so many cheesy grins. Like real, like holiday tourist family <laughs> snaps. Like yeah. all of you just massive big grins, like unashamed. There's no kind of, yeah, yeah like the standard cliche drum and bass kind of playing it cool. No, nah, no, stuff nah. that. Like it's just, yeah, yeah, freedom, freedom. Cheshire cats across the board, mate. Yeah, <laughs> go on. Amazing, amazing. And obviously then the success of Void as well, really. I mean, you you say you said this to me in interviews before that you don't really consider yourself much of a producer, but I mean, Void <laughs> has definitely had an impact. And I saw Mandy Dextra said her favorite tune of the year was um, AMC Bass. I saw that on oh, Facebook really? literally this morning. Oh, like, nice. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've had a great year as a producer as well. Yeah, it's been eventful, man. I mean, like that whole album, I pretty much almost finished it. Um, 2020, um, but then I started making some extra bits and bobs. And if I'm honest, like the way that I kind of make, I write music to like fit into certain sections like of my set or into to make it work with a mix. You know, like I don't write music. I don't sit there and think, oh yeah, I want to write this type of tune today. Like I'm like, I need to get this type of tune so I can mix it into that. So I know where I'm going after this. You know, so Brilliant. it's great to know that you know you can get all of those music like ideas down and. Um, I think people, people seem to like it. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just said, now we'll wrap up now, but you just said, you know, there's a lot of people who have been doing amazing things. Who are your favourite DJs? Who do you vote for? Do you vote in the awards? Uh, I, ha I used to. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done so in the last few years, but I don't... Um, I um, <clears throat> used to. Do you know, there's one person I always used to vote for, and it was, I think it was in... Um, I can't remember what category. It's like some sort of category where, like, you... Um, you, you big up the people who have been in the industry for so long and doing extra bits All of fame. Bars. And like, I, I always say, I always vote for him every year. His name's Bo. Um, oh, yes, He's been yes. ma mastering everyone's, and everyone's music and cutting dub plates back in the day since for as long as anyone, any of us can remember. And it, he's played such a pivotal part in our scene. I don't think many people will like hear about him or know about him. So like, I yeah. always vote for him. But. And, you, and you've brought him up in interviews before as well. Yeah, well, I think he deserves recognition, you know? Like, people don't realise how important that guy is. So, um, and has been. So, cool. yeah, I think he deserves it. Well, recognition to you now. Congratulations. Now, for the third year in a row, Best DJ, Drummer Bass Arena Awards. What can we expect from you in 2022? I'll go on holiday.
going on holiday. <laughs> there we have it, an exclusive from a.m.c. He's going on holiday in 2022. Thank you so much to everybody who has tuned in and has voted for everybody and got involved in the Drum and Bass Arena Awards. It's been another incredible year. Thank you very much, AMC. Thanks, brother. We're going to head back over to Jenna and sign out. I'm Dave Colombo Jenkins. Thank you very much. And we are out of here. It's been another beautiful year of drum and bass music and a much better year for all of us. Now we've been able to be with each other and rave again. The renewed sense of appreciation has been unreal since summer. And even here, right now in the studio with the first real life interviews on the awards since 2019. Thank you to everybody who got involved and voted for their favorite acts and to everyone who's come down or linked with us on Zoom today. Once again, a huge congratulations to everyone who was nominated tonight or nominated full stop. You know, we say this every year, but it's not about the winners. It's about the scene and everyone involved who commits their lives to this music. We have something truly special here. Now, I work in a lot of different genres and no community has such a strong passion and culture like our jungle and drum and bass. We've got our own sound, our own tempo with our own rules and our own vision. There's nothing quite like it anywhere else. So let's keep it that way. Let's keep it moving forward. Let's keep it special. Thank you to you lot out there for tuning in, supporting, voting, and most importantly, being beautiful humans. Please stay that way. Big love and thanks to the whole team behind the scenes who work so hard to make these awards happen each and every year, despite the madness going on in the world. And last, but by no means least, thanks to Henry. I'm joking. <laughs> thanks to my right-hand man, Dave Colombo Jenkins. Until next year, y'all, stay classy. Peace. Jungle, Jungle dreams. dreams. Jungle dreams.